Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Military TV. In today's session, we will discuss the reason why the U.S. Navy's Ticonderoga class cruiser may be retired. If you are curious to the answer, stay tuned only at this channel. Since the Navy embarked on a long-term strategy to retire its 1980s Ticonderoga class cruisers, some of the cruiser fleet has been put through a modernization program to ensure the capabilities of U.S. carrier strike groups for the next decade. Ten of these cruisers were modernized in the 2000s, with seven more following in 2015. Anyway, before we discuss further its retirement phase, let's take a look at the overview of the Ticonderoga class. The Ticonderoga class of guided missile cruisers is a class of warships in the United States Navy, which was ordered and authorized in the 1978 fiscal year. The class uses passive phase array radar and was originally planned as a class of destroyers. Moreover, these ships are designed to be elements of carrier battle groups or amphibious ready groups, as well as to undertake operations like interdiction or escort, with upgrades to their NSPY-1 phase radar systems and their associated missile payloads as part of the Aegis Ballistic Missile Defense System. Members of this class have repeatedly demonstrated their proficiency as mobile anti-ballistic missile and anti-satellite weaponry platforms. In addition, the Ticonderoga class was originally intended to be destroyers. However, this was changed due to the ship's increased capabilities as a result of the Aegis Warfare System. The ship was then transformed into a guided missile cruiser with the addition of new offensive and defensive capabilities. Furthermore, the Ticonderoga class consists of 27 guided missile cruisers that have been in service since 1983. Their manufacture ran from 1980 to 1994 and were successors to the Virginia-class guided missiles cruiser of the U.S. Navy. The crew of the military ship has 364 men, and the ship has a length of 567 feet, a beam of 55 feet, a draft of 31 feet, and a displacement of 9,960 tons at when fully loaded. According to the updates of the 27 completed vessels, 19 were built by Ingalls Shipbuilding and 8 by Bath Iron Works. All but one of the ships in the class, Thomas S. Gates are named after significant events in American military history, and at least 12 of them share their names with World War II-era aircraft carriers. As of 2020, 22 ships are still active and expected to serve for 35 years since commissioning. Anyway, there are some reasons why these ships were proposed early retirement. First, due to Budget Control Act of 2011 requirements to cut the defense budget for FY 2013 and subsequent years, the U.S. Navy was supposed to decommission seven cruisers early in fiscal years 2013 and 2014, according to the U.S. Defense 2013 budget proposal. Moreover, by October 2012, the U.S. Navy chose not to retire four of the cruisers early in order to maintain the size of the fleet. Four Ticonderoga-class cruisers, plus 21 Arleigh Burke-class destroyers, are scheduled to be equipped for anti-ballistic missile and anti-satellite operations. Additionally, in March 2019, the Navy proposed decommissioning the six oldest of the active ships, Bunker Hill, Mobile Bay, Antietam, Lake Gulf, San Jacinto, and Lake Champlain in 2021 and 2022 instead of dry docking them for life extension maintenance updates as a cost-saving measure. This wouldn't strictly constitute an early retirement, as the ships would be at their originally planned 35-year life dates, but they would be able to serve longer with the upgrades. In addition, based on a recent update on the Navy's cruiser modernization initiative revealed by the United States Naval Institute, the 10 modified cruisers, all of which were commissioned in the late 1980s, are becoming increasingly expensive to maintain and less reliable to operate. The five cruisers presently undergoing modernization are proving to be more expensive to repair than initial Navy estimates anticipated. Moreover, according to Galenis, Vice Admiral and the Commander of Naval Sea Systems Command, the main issue is the unanticipated amount of work necessitated by the warship's degraded condition. The first is the amount of change that have been pushed into the availability, driven principally by the condition of the hull, mechanical and electrical plant. As a result, a lot of structural work need to be done that what has previously been anticipated. Some additional work on the underwater hull portion, including the running gear and again, in some cases, these ships had not been docked for an extended period of time, so there was more work in that area than initially planned. Furthermore, the future of the Ticonderoga modernization project hangs in the line as the costs of repairing, refitting, and sustaining the current cruiser fleet increase. 
The Navy has already stated that it is eager to quickly phase out outdated and aged hardware in order to free up cash for new platforms, but Congress may be reluctant to support the short-term fleet size decrease that would result from shortening the ongoing cruiser modernization program. For the information, the Navy plans to retire 48 ships during 2022 until 2026. The planned retirements include the first Nimitz-class aircraft carrier, the first two Ohio-class guided missile submarines, and the first Victorious-class ocean surveillance ship. The list also includes 11 Ticonderoga-class guided missile cruisers and 11 Los Angeles-class attack submarines. We can see in detail the retirement list of Ticonderoga-class by fiscal year below. In 2022, six Ticonderoga-class guided missile cruisers will be placed in reserve San Jacinto, CG-56, Monterey, CG-61, Hugh City, CG-66, Anzio, CG-68, Vela Gulf, CG-72, and Port Royal, CG-73. In 2023, two Ticonderoga-class guided missile cruisers will be placed in reserve Bunker Kell, CG-52, and Mobile Bay, CG-53. In 2024, two Ticonderoga-class guided missile cruisers will be placed in reserve, anti M, CG-54, and Shiloh, CG-67. In 2026, one Ticonderoga-class guided missile cruiser will be placed in reserve, Chancellorsville, CG-62. Another important point to highlight is that the Navy intended to replace the Ticonderoga-class fleet with the ill-fated CGX Next Generation Cruiser Program, which was canceled in favor of the Flight 3 Arleigh Burke-class destroyer in 2010. The future Large Surface Combatant, or DDGX, program is the most recent initiative to produce a direct successor for the Navy's aging cruisers. The Navy hopes to purchase the first of these DDGX ships in FY 2028, but production and acquisition projects could change in the coming years. Anyway, feel free to leave your comment below if you have any suggestions or certain topic to discuss further in the next videos. That's all for today, thanks for watching and see you next time.